Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Daniel Mueller with Solid Leaders, and this is E4, Focusing Attention, the fourth in the series of 10 executive competencies in the category of competency of our five category of competency model. And this category of competency is called execution. And executive execution is key for you to overperform and to keep what you have, which is your executive role. It's absolutely essential to every executive to achieve excellence in execution. Today, we're talking about focus attention, and I have a great set of folks here. So welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Carolyn is a guest today. And Carolyn uh, is at expert at focusing attention. So I invited her today to join us. Carolyn, this is our regular group that we're, we're uh, going through this uh, competency series. And so as I go through this, you chime in as you see fit, okay? I will, thank you. There is, let's see, Louis or Luis? Luis just joined us as well. I don't know where Anna is today, so I'm gonna to have to let people let people in. Luis, hello. Hi. You're early. I know, I was in the waiting room. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. You missed my great introduction. What's nice about the waiting room, they let you hear, so I can hear everything, but I, I wasn't, a, so that was a good thing. So I did hear the intro. Is that right? Yes. Oh, okay. You could leave yourself unmuted probably, and so we, we want to just have a, a really robust discussion, but if you got background noise, I understand. Okay. Yep. Very good. All right, I'm going to I'm going to share my screen and this is our presentation for today. I'm going to take it from the start of the slideshow. So, uh, the 10 best ways to get solid executive results. Five categories of competencies, we're focused on execution. We're here today at E4 focusing attention. Focusing attention, four key areas that we're going to talk about, increasing our ability to gain and maintain focus and attention, two, improve sequential thinking skills, three, decrease tendency to become distracted, four, increase self-discipline, four, staying on task. So the first uh, section talked about increasing your ability to gain and maintain focus and attention. So, so the question is, why do we say this is a two-fold competency? Does anyone remember from the reading? Why is it a two-fold competency? Because you have to uh, maintain your own focus and attention on, on a subject, and then you have to be able to command the focus and attention of others. Absolutely. So what are the ways you struggle with focusing your own attention? This is time to, time to be vulnerable. And I'll go first. So for me, I do really well if I have calendared appointments. And all day long, I have calendared appointments. However, when I have a break in between sessions, I can put my attention anywhere I want. And often, I'm very impulsive. I don't think, OK, what's the most critical thing that I have to get done during this break? I just, something catches my eye. I get a thought. It's an impulse, it comes in. It's like, well, I should call a staff member. And so I just pick up the phone and, and just call that person. So I don't really have that thinking that goes through my head of, okay, what's the most critical thing I need to do? And sometimes that's okay, but sometimes it really gets me in trouble because I like drag staff people into unplanned meetings just because I happen to be free, but it doesn't mean they're free and I interrupt their day and it can mess them up. So what, uh, what are some struggles you have with focusing your own attention? Yeah, I'm sure, Daniel, maybe I'll hop in here. To me, it's all about giving myself permission to focus on one thing, you know, with, with things coming out every direction. Similar to you, as long as I have things scheduled and I know I'm giving myself time to work on priorities at some point, it gives me permission to work on something 
at the current time. And you know, back to comment, it's a twofold thing. It's about us as leaders and our teams. Same things for the teams. If they understand what their priorities are and when things have to happen, it gives them permission to focus as well. Right. Good. Good. Someone else. Good. Good point. You know, I think one of the things that we've struggled with is in startups um, with founders that are the very entrepreneurial type trying to um, keep them focused. They, 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 if you constrain them too much, they shut down and they want to be belligerent and so on. Um, so that's kind of a, a slightly different one. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. Very much. I, I resemble that remark. Yes. Good. What else? What are ways you struggle with focusing your own attention? Can you repeat yeah. the question? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Roger. So I'm curious how many of you are finding a new struggle um, if you are now working home remotely with a house full of other people and that wasn't your norm? Because that could be the struggles your staff are having now as well. I like get someone who might have been really, really good with all these skills sitting in an office. There's a whole new world of distraction going on. So, and how are they dealing with that? Yeah, very much so. Good question. You know, I find I've got a dedicated workspace. You know, I have a home office. And um, uh, for me, that helps me stay focused uh, and minimize distractions. I can close the door. Now I've seen some of my peers um, you know, changing up their, uh, their uh, environment will get on video conferences and some people will be outside or you can hear birds chirping and, and that's fine too. I mean, maybe they need a change to minimize distraction or stay engaged. But for me, I just have to have a dedicated space. Good. Yeah. Very good. I, yeah. I'm going to share for, for myself. I, I do have an office, a home office. I can shut the door. Um, but all of a sudden I've got multiple kids at home, you know, college kids and my senior and, you know, whatnot. and there are a lot more distractions. I literally had to put on my calendar. I had to save time in the morning, and the afternoon to get up and walk out of my office. Or if I'm working outside, come inside. Otherwise they're interrupting me all day long even though I have a closed door. Mom, I need this, mom, I need that, because they need my attention. And when they're off doing their thing, they don't call mom, but I'm sitting right here. So I've always told them if it's not on my calendar, it doesn't exist. So literally now it's like, I have to plan and they know, okay, mom's gonna emerge and focus on us for a little while and it's not just gonna be at dinner time. <laughs> that had to become one of my strategies. I have uh, one of my clients has a, a whiteboard on the refrigerator, a little little uh, thing that he writes on, daddy will be available at this time next. And he puts the time on the refrigerator and they know daddy's going to emerge from his office and interface with the family during that time. That's a brilliant one because we've been using a whiteboard for him for assignments. Uh, for the morning and then do a like a lunch check-in. Um, but I like having the time on there. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah I find uh, with a two-year-old and a seven-year-old at home, you know, yeah. I have to share my calendar with my wife and, and kind of highlight quiet time needed during this hour. <laughs> uh, so uh, so she's, she's looking at my calendar every day. Yeah, so I've got, um, I've got five and seven and I had them draw a sign, green on one side, red on the other, and hang it on my office door. And they know the colors, generally. Red, red means okay, right? <laughs> That's how it started. Actually, it did. They switched it. It's when I was a kid, it was just, to tell me I couldn't do something, and that was exactly what I had to do, because there's clearly a, a conspiracy. There was tremendous fun on the other side of that boundary. If I could just crash through. Yeah, but going back to you know, Carol's original question, you know, kidding aside, is the thing that I felt in terms of, well, I'll be vulnerable here, is there's a little guilt, right? When you've got a couple kids at home and they're younger, like ours are, 
and they're not engaged fully in school like they used to be. They've got a lot of energy and, you know, they're not having the best of days, right? And can I carve time away from my day and like Carol said, say, get up a little early in the morning or work at night for some that are flexible to spend some more engagement time with the kids during the day. Yeah. Right. And, you know, as, as Daniel was sharing, it's, you know, when you have this twofold because it's about your own attention, but it's also about the attention for those people that work for you. And they all have these same struggles going on at home as well. So giving them permission through your own example to focus and understand that they've got these new distractions. But at some point you need a meeting where they're all together and no one's distracted. And so you have to learn how to you know, balance those and lead through those things. Right. So. Yeah, very much so. Good, good point. Okay. So let's, let's go back to this. So, um, what are ways you struggle focusing the attention of others? I think we were talking about that, right? What are the ways we struggle with focusing the attention of others, especially staff? Let's talk about staff. How, how can we, how can we, um, and let's just jump down to this question. What are the ways we can improve focusing others' attention? Well, I, I try to be respectful of my team's time. So I, I know they've got a lot going on. They have their direct reports that they need to give some time to. So right. um, my, uh, I, I schedule regular and consistent meetings were remote. Uh, it's a sales team. So, so they know it, you know, without fail, we're going to have an 8 a.m. Monday morning staff call to right. kick off the week. Uh, and I, and I rarely will schedule anything without at least, you know, two days uh, advance notice. I, Cause I don't like when something pops up in my calendar for the next day or even the same day, uh, even if I have an opening. So uh, I, I just try to keep in mind the way I manage my cal calendar and I, I emulate that with my direct reports. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. Someone else. Yeah. For, for me and my business, we're, uh, you know, it's digital banking. And so, you know, we are, I would say somewhat interrupt driven, uh, especially right now, you've all heard in the news that, you know, digital banking is having problems with all the stimulus checks coming in. And so responding to that, um, a lot of fires, you know, pull people away at a moment's notice, but you know, the kind of ugly word of multitasking, especially when we're remote is, you know, I'll get my staff into a call and then, you can tell someone's kind of wandered off and someone has, you know, pinged them on IM to, you know, go put out a fire or whatever. Some of those things are really necessary, but it's about finding the balance when, you know, of what's truly urgent and what, what's not. Mm -hmm. We've had a lot of distractions on that front lately. It's tough stuff, tough environment. The good news, that which does not kill us will make us stronger, right? Right. So, um, Mitchell, I would imagine, you know, part of focusing your employees is always prioritizing, helping them understand what the number one priorities are, especially if those are changing constantly. So, you know, I can imagine you must be having a lot of quick kind of stand up here, are the new priorities, maybe even multiple times a day. Um, but, you know, with things moving that quickly. Yeah, we are. You know, typically it doesn't pull in you know, the entire management team. Uh, but, the, you know, over the last couple of weeks, there may be something that, pull, you know, pulls several of us away at once. Um, and then there's, you know, that always comes with, with communication up and down the line on our side and the customer side or whatever. And so, um, yeah, certainly there, there have been more than one call where we just stop and take a minute and say, okay, what is going on? is that the most important thing right now? If it is, we just end the call and reschedule. If not, we say, okay, well, let's put that aside and, and come back to it later. One of the things I've always uh, tried to focus on, uh, no pun intended, is making sure each of my team members understands the why of what we're doing. How does it align in the company's goals and objectives? If they can explain why they're working on something, the, the focus is usually right after and also enabling that team to determine the how and sometimes the when, but at least the how. So if they can determine the proposed the how, 
they're also got some skin in the game, if you will, which also drives focus on their side. Mm -hmm. That's good. How do behavioral styles impact all this that we're talking about? How do the behavioral styles impact this? When you're trying to focus a D style, how is that different than, than focus the, the attention of an S style? I think with the uh, D style, they, they want uh, brief and concise, maybe right to the point, bullet point, uh, those discussion topics, whereas uh, your detailed oriented wants uh, all the context behind. Yeah. yeah. Into the table. I've always used uh, with when it comes to D's. I've always used the be brief, be bright, be gone. Yep, yep, that's great. What about with the S style? Here's the hint. Here's their drivers: nurturing relationships, helping others. This is the style that uh, us executives know the least about because there's very few of us that really understand this style or or exhibit these. Behaviors. I'll comment, uh, Daniel. So on, on this style, you need to understand they're going to ask, they're going to they're going to kind of ask themselves, how does this make me feel? So there needs to be attention to how that person feels about it before they're going to kind of prioritize it. They have to digest it first. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 that's good. What about the eye behavioral style? How do you focus the attention of the eye, the interacting socializer, that expressive, outgoing, personable, fun-loving, upbeat, talkative person? Yeah, I think it's just agendas and action items. You know, it's the trying to bring them back to the what are the deliverables. And, and also, how, how do you find joy in work, right? I think, I think that area is and how do you motivate through whether it's joy or it's, you know, how do they learn something new or achieve something differently, right? Yeah, that would be the motivating factor of the green quadrant. Yep. I, I find that uh, the, the first answer was very much a, uh, a D or a C, high C secondary D, high D secondary C answer. Get them into you know, tasks and spreadsheets and actually the, the opposite, I think you have to ha help them enjoy, help be positive, have fun, crack a joke, a little small talk because otherwise they tend to disengage. Um, what about the C behavioral style? Being accurate, maintaining quality or key drivers. How do you engage? How do you focus the attention of this person? data data yeah data facts and figures yeah. you know what's the assignment what are the tasks how am i going to be measured what does success look like yeah here's the key yeah. drive this, this one the high d is control show this person how they we're going to get more results and more control by doing by by focusing on this um how are we going to have more fun and enjoy our job more by focusing on this. This, how is this going to produce stability for the team by focusing on this? And then the C, how are we going to improve quality and accuracy and excellence of, of deliverable by focusing on this? So that's the four, four yeah, behaviors. I think there's, there's a how element here too. So you were talking more about the what. But if you look at, for example, the bottom left quadrant, you know, uh, we got made teams of analysts, for example, I learned that stopping by their desk and asking a quick question was not the best approach. Maybe writing them an email a day before gives them some time to think about it as well. Yes. So I think the what's important here, but also the how. Is yes. Also important. Yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely dead on. It, it's, it's the, the how. How are you, how are they going to do it? And each of the styles is going to do it in a different uh, a way and have a different approach, right? Excellent uh, point. Okay, so improving sequential thinking skills. 
Now, just for a refresh, I'm going to pull up the uh, uh, the article. Let me see. Share my screen, and I think is this is it right here. Okay. So here's the here's our document, and let's just see what page it's on. Focus attention is on page 28. So close your eyes for a second so I don't make you dizzy. And 28. Here we go. Page 28. Okay. Focusing attention. Gaining the attention of others. Now improving sequential thinking. What is sequential thinking? Basically breaking it into small bites. Okay. Not jumping to conclusions. Yep. Good. Um, why is this skill important regarding uh, focusing others' attention? Why would well, you I think it I think it helps to explain and break down complex problems so that you can focus on mapping out a plan or a solution. Yep. Um, you know, kind of in those bite-sized chunks that when you roll it back together, you know, you can go execute on it. Uh, did you, good, good answer. Did you uh, try this exercise here? Yes. Yes. Was it hard? Kind of. I got it wrong. I got it wrong, but it wasn't hard. It was, it, it was very easy. I said, this is simple. It's the answer is Friday. I said, this, when this is this is the one thing I'd actually did right, so. Yeah, I got it right. Yeah, I did too. It just hurts my head to even, you know, go there. <laughs> so how do you improve in this area of sequential thinking? How, how do you improve this skill? What do you, what do you think? Repetition, probably. They say, they say this, working with word problems, like the one above, is an excellent way to improve. I'm just not going to do word problems. <laughs> <laughs> and, working, and working with this coach is not going to help you, because <laughs> he's not good at it. So, you know, later on in the chapter, it gets into the stimulus thought and response. Uh huh. And I think knowing when something is coming in, so you're you're drinking from a fire hose, you know, pausing to think through it and form the response and, and train the team to do that. Yeah, you have to synthesize the information. Mm. Information, when you take time to let it sink in, maybe ask questions before you jump to some conclusion or try to put out that fire so you can move to the next thing. And information that is synthesized becomes intelligence. And so looking at, you know, if it's just data, facts, and figures, until you put it in context, it doesn't become intelligence. And really, it's probably not as useful until you do that. Good point. Why do you think that is? I'm going to go to my notes here and do a diagram. But tell, tell me more about that. Why do you think that is? You know, it... it I mean, it's, it's about relevance. So, you know, until you can determine why some information, why a problem that's posed to you, until you know its relevance, and you're, if you can think a step ahead. Right. So I've got to make a decision. If I decide A, what could be the outcome? If I decide B, what could be the outcome? You have to take that into consideration. Right. Rather than just, well, here's a solution. And sometimes you have to make a decision quickly. But nonetheless, to Oren's part, if you skip the thought in the uh, S to T to R part, then it's just an incomplete process. Right. Right. There's two tricks. Go so ahead. There's two tricks that I use. One is, what does success look like? If I ask myself that question, it'll force me to think through what I need to be successful. Second trick is I ask myself, am I playing checkers or chess? 
If I'm playing checkers, I only need to think one move ahead. If I'm playing chess, then I need to think through the whole sequence. As soon as I put myself in a chess versus checkers mode, it, it, it's just automatic from there. That's, that's good too. Here's a diagram that uh, has helped me over the years. A, B, C. And oftentimes stimulus, response. And my most frequent modus operandi is to go right there. So from stimulus to response without this this uh, this center step, which is the thinking, the analysis, the stimulus, thought of how I should respond, and then my response. So that is, uh, that is something that I struggle with. And that, that's impulsivity. And I think some of us are much more measured. I think the best executives are more measured. And I, it's something that I'm, I'm working on personally. I'm, how many of you work on that? Oh, yeah. Yes? Yeah. I often make a better decision if I can sleep on it rather than react. Something goes haywire. If I don't have to give an answer, I don't have to respond until the next day. I often try not to. That's the danger with email. It's so quick to you can fire off a response to something and then wish you could take that back. Mm -hmm. It's, it's dangerous. I see a lot of head nods. Yeah. It's almost like, you know, personal professional branding, right? It, it's, it takes time to build a brand, but you can destroy it very quickly with the wrong reaction. That's right. Okay. So I don't know if we have a great answer to how do you improve sequential thinking skills? Anyone want to take one more shot? How do you improve in this area? We, we know it's important. We know we have to do it. Well, you know, we, we've talked over the weeks about taking that time to, in your day, that you blocked aside to go through and review yourself. And I think just having some something on that every day where you're going, hey, did I follow this process? What was the biggest thing today that happened? And did I follow the, the STR? Mm hmm Mm -hmm. STR. I like that. Is that an acrostic that is used quite a bit? Have you heard that before? I haven't. No. Oh, you just made that up? Good. No, no, it's out of your book. It's the <laughs> stimulus to thought to respond. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just on the next section still. Did I really write that? <laughs> it's in bold. <laughs> STR, stimulus thought response, yes. Um, okay, good, so decreasing our tendency to become distracted. What are some ideas how you, know, you can implement, uh, that you can implement to decrease distractions? What, what are the uh, distractions that, that get you the most? Yeah, First. well for me, it's this guy right here. The uh, yes. And um, so what I've done is I go into my settings and I make sure that alerts, whether they're audible or, or even the flags that you get on the screen, right. I manage those. I, it does, I just don't use the default setting. Uh, I try to pick what should be a priority to get my attention. The other things, I can wait until I have time and I want to go look at them. Another thing I did once, and it turned out to burn me, was uh, I... Um, I had set up my phone so that email would not automatically just go into my inbox. I had to open up the application and then I had to refresh the application and it would have to go out to the server and then it would pull the emails at one time. So they weren't constantly hitting my inbox and getting my attention. Problem with that was I was kind of slow to remember that I had ch changed that setting and I was missing a lot of emails over a longer period of time. And then the other thing I've recently done is I actually got a second phone. So I have a phone that is work related and then I have a personal. Um, so I, I try to I try to stem those two separately. How many, how many have two phones? That's a, it's a great technique. It is. 
especially in this day and age, if you take two phones and you put them together, that's about one one tenth the size of of the phone that I used to carry. Can I remember that big? Okay, some of you are are too young for that. As a total rabbit trail, having nothing to do with nothing. I just want you to know that I was there when they brought in the first cell phone. So was I, Daniel. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's compare stories. This one was a suitcase, oh. a big suitcase, and you unzip it, it opens up. There's a full-size old-fashioned phone. You know those wall phones that you pick up and with the rotary yeah. dial? That was embedded in the suitcase, and the battery was the rest of the suitcase. You got okay, it. Man. That one? <laughs> oh. Did Alexander Graham Bell show you how to use that? Smart <laughs> ass. <laughs> you probably have a little crank handle on the side to you know recharge the battery. Yeah, Radar O'Reilly. Moving on, I'm going to edit this part of the video. <laughs> how does this relate to priority management? Question: How does this relate? Decreasing the tendency to become distracted. How does this relate to priority management? Well, clearly, if you're if you're constantly being, being distracted, you're diverting from what you defined as your own priorities for the day. We didn't talk about it in just this little section, but you know, some of the best time management skills talk about um, not watching your email constantly all day, right? Okay, the first 15 minutes of the hour or whatever works for you, right? But not just constantly, ding, let me look, ding. And the same thing with chat and instant messenger. Yeah. I had to learn to just turn that thing off. I'm like, gosh, Slack is killing me. Like, okay, like a couple of times a day, I'll go look, but I, I just need Slack to not be on. Ding, ding, ding. I mean, just like you're saying for the phone, you just have to apply that across all the different distractors. I attended a, um, a conference for CEOs once, and it was fascinating because they, one of the things that they taught, and this was very hard for me, was to quit distracting your staff and distracting your staff they this is the hard part for me they were like even an email back that says thank you you've now distracted them because they're going to stop and they're going to be like oh my ceo or my boss just sent me an email and i have to read it and it's like they've stopped what they were doing to read thank you and so i'm like but it goes against my nature to not be appreciative um so i had to learn to just uh, i think they're it's a valid point. So when I send those emails, I put them on a time delay. So they all go out either very first thing in the morning or very at the end of the day so that they still get my thank you because that's important to me, but it's less likely to interrupt the other priorities I've given them or you know, just the job has given them. Um, so try and, try and do it both ways. That is a great technique. Someone else, give us some ideas of, of what you do to, uh, to manage distractions. I keep a list of, of things I need to do. You know, I'm a, I'm a list maker. And, and um, when I'm on my game, because I don't always do this, uh, well, I'll make at least two, if not three columns on my legal pad, A, B, and C. Priority A are the things that I need to absolutely get done today. B, maybe in the next day or two, and C, frankly, can wait. If I don't ever get to them, that's okay too. They've just maybe thoughts I jotted down or something I might, might want to look into. Good. That's, mm -hmm. that's a great technique. Someone else? Luis, I, I'm going to call on you because you, you, uh, you need to have these techniques. Yeah. What, which, one, which one do you use to keep you focused? And I think it is uh, circling back to um, kind of managing my calendar and uh, blocking time, uh, like we spoke about uh, earlier. Also, in, in the startup culture, 
uh, it, it, you know, the mentality is like all hands on deck and, and maybe sometimes it's death by meeting. Uh, so we get meeting invites with like 12, 15 people attached to it. And so one thing that I had started was uh, mandating that a meeting agenda with the purpose be attached to the invite uh, so that we can start seeing, wait, is my presence necessary or are these team members uh, required to attend you know let's not invite them you know so freeing up team members time and then also realizing i'm not the person to make the decision or the call during this meeting so uh, really really focusing in on on the calendar and, and those invites excellent. excellent excellent mitchell what about you what's your tips and tricks focus uh, so i struggle in this area right i get blown up all the time email, text. If they can't find me one place, they call my phone. Um, so we're a very execution driven team that's fast moving. I try, you know, I try to block my calendar. Um, but if it's super urgent, people drop meetings there anyway. I would love to have an EA per what you have in the book, but I don't, I don't have one. Uh, so it, it's a struggle for me to be honest. So I use uh, I'm a GTD user and I try to adhere to that, but I kind of get off course sometimes. Um, and some days are really good about driving through my, you know, my tasks or, uh, you know, some days I don't get anything done if something blows up that we have to attend to. GTD stands for getting things done. Uh, famous uh, book and famous uh, methodology for those that struggle with, task orientation right who's the author of that mitchell do you remember uh david allen yes david allen good guy wrote that probably 30 years ago right classic work on getting things done task managing very uh very good for those that are are well disciplined like you roger you would probably love it um uh, great methodology for John. I know you have a lot of discipline. You too. It's not, I'm not mentioning you. I'm not, not mentioning you. doesn't mean you don't have discipline. I'm just simply calling out some people I know have an excessive amount. <laughs> okay. Daniel, yes, sir. I have one comment. Please. This is kind of untraditional, but I find it very effective for my clients. If somebody's distracted, almost chronically so there's typically something that is coming up they feel guilty about i know guilt was mentioned earlier and you have to be honest about that because if you're feeling guilty about doing you're not doing something that you think you should you have to practice some form of forgiveness before the distraction is going to go away so if you add that to your discipline of checking in, am I feeling kind of guilty about something? If so, I'm not going to give my full attention. Practice forgiveness. Forgive yourself for feeling guilty. And your energy will come back. Your focus will come back. Mm -hmm. that's, that's our two minutes of deep psychology for the day, everyone. <laughs> that's good, John. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's, let me go back to uh, sharing my uh, screen here and let's look at um, what about managing the distractions of others? How do we manage the distractions of others? What do we do? Well, I'm a D, so I call people out on it. Yes. What else? I think that's one of the very best things to do, by the way. And it doesn't matter what behavioral style they are. I think we should, we need to name it. Yeah, what else? How do you manage the distractions? When others are distracted and they're not paying attention and they're not focused, what do you do? Luis, what do you do? Your guys are distracted in a meeting. You can tell they're, they're texting. Somebody, they're looking at their phones. 
Yeah, usually, and that, that's one rule is, uh, especially if, if, if it's not like just, you know, a little round table, but if, if there's a clear agenda, we need focus, uh, you know, usually the first thing is no laptops allowed, uh, you know, put your phones down and, uh, you know, let's pay attention to if the whiteboard or, or whatever we have going on, but uh, just demanding that focus, you know, just being straight. Right. So um, that worked uh, six and eight weeks ago. What do you do on your Zoom meeting? <laughs> when they're distracted <laughs> you can't have because we did the same thing i have a stand up no laptop no cell phone i'm like i really can't have a no laptop no cell phone meeting right it's now true. Wrong join the call. But, you can, but you can make them turn on their video which which oh. is a little more accountability uh i will tell you that that's um and so right now I've been consulting for so the rest of you real quickly at a cybersecurity company and the laptops don't have cameras. Mine, because I'm consulting, it's my camera, but cameras are so vulnerable to being hacked that they don't have cameras. <laughs> so I can't do that. Oh, well, but you, you, you can look and see, you know, like if your organization uses Teams or Slack or something like that, right. you can ask them to turn it off and look and watch their status. Right. Well, I also don't want to assume it's their fault, right? Maybe my meeting is not organized properly, right? Maybe I have people that shouldn't be in there or my one meeting should be three different meetings. So I've got a certain set of people not doing it in 15 minutes. Well, why do I have them in this meeting? So yeah, I've, I've experienced everything that, that you all have said, but I've also you know, pointed the finger back at myself or my team saying this is a poorly constructed meeting. And of course people are bored and of course they should be doing our things because the best thing the company they're doing, I think, is sometimes. Good, good point. We got to look at ourselves too, right? And say, what am I doing, or what can I do differently to cause uh, to, to cause greater uh, focus? Yeah, you can call on people directly as well. So make force it to be a two way exchange, so that they're never quite sure when you may be calling on them to engage or answer a question. Yep, that's that's a good point. You notice that our meeting here, it's all Socratic method. So almost everything that we're doing is just a, a series of questions. So by asking questions, you really engage your, your audience, right? Good, let's look at this, speaking about more questions. Self-discipline for staying on task. How does self-discipline relate to the focusing attention competency? How does self-discipline relate to this competency? To be really good, at focusing your attention and focusing others' attention, how does self-discipline play into this? Is it so obvious? It's like, Daniel, stupid question. Of course. You have trouble without it. Yeah, it, it's uh, the mark of a top executive, I think, is to be self-disciplined. So if you don't have the self-discipline to control those impulses, that ABC, right? That stimulus response, you gotta, gotta stop and think. Um, here is um, another question. How can you strengthen your self-discipline to stay on task? Assuming that you want to, how do you strengthen self-discipline? And the next question, why is multitasking not recommended? So Mitchell, I'm going to give you that one. Uh, yeah. So I forget what book it was that I read or listened to for work one time, but it talked all about how multitasking is actually a myth and it's really, you can switch focus and switch it quickly, but true multitasking actually isn't possible. And so every time you're supposed to be focusing on one thing, you, even if you quickly switch to something else and back, you know, chances are you missed something. How many of y'all play golf? Yes, a little, little. There is a technique in golf that is taught that is called defocusing. So you put laser sharp focus on the ball and you're, you, you swing the club and hopefully that club hits the ball and then hopefully the ball goes straight and long, but whatever. And then you defocus. You actually look away, 
you think about something totally innocuous, you think about what you had for lunch, whatever, but you just absolutely defocus. So it takes so much laser focus and then you defocus. And I find that to be a, a really powerful technique for executives. That ability to laser focus, and sometimes you need to defocus and think about something completely different or put your focus on something else. But um, I think it's very, very important. Um, why is multitasking not recommended? And, and to Mitchell's point, there really is no such thing as multitasking. But how to, trying to have two things you're focusing on at the same time, why is it not recommended? Because your productivity takes a hit. And I think in your book, you talk about 40% less productivity when you try to multitask. Yep. Yeah. So what actions can you take to improve in this area? What actions can you take to improve in this area? to get better. Like, let's all say we are going to get better. We're going to leave this meeting and we're going to be better at focusing our own attention and focus the attention of others. What actions to take? You know, I've, I've recently gone back to using a very focused planner system. Okay. Um, now I digitally, I just converted it to be digital. Um, so that I can keep track of meetings better um, with audio recordings. Um, but having that as, as the tool is, is the big thing for me. Good, someone else, good. Good idea. Ha having a planner that you use all the time, whatever kind it is, but you have to have a system and you have to have ideally only one main system. Yeah. That, that's the trick because I used to get, I used to put notes, you know, digital notes, handwritten notes, and I couldn't keep track of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the key for me, and I guess we're really talking about time management element here, is, is creating a buffer, right? Because I, I work in IT and I've worked in operations and before, and you're always sort of in, in two different worlds, you know, the strategic planning aspect and transformations, and you're also, you know, something just broke, go fix it, right? Again, whether it's business operations or IT. And what I found is my calendar was filled up with planned things and I never accounted for unplanned. And unplanned was always 20% of my time, always. Sometimes during quarter end or year end, it was 50, 60% of the time. So I had to create that buffer, which I know it's okay to move those things as needed. And that just gave me peace of mind and permission to focus on things as appropriate. Mm -hmm. That's good. Okay, any other thoughts? Let me uh, just ask you, uh, how can we develop this strength? Let me share my screen. Uh, we're in the home stretch here, everyone. What stops you from doing your best job focusing? Question to ask yourself. What can you change to improve your ability to focus? Good question to ask yourself. Here's the, here's the question I want to answer. Are you addicted to multitasking? And what can you do to fix this? So show of hands. Who is addicted to multitasking besides me? I don't know if addicted, but I, there are certain things awesome. I absolutely know I cannot multitask, but there are a lot of times I do. It just depends on how much brain power is needed for the task. How many of you are just not bought in that multitasking is not the best thing to do? I think it depends on the task. <laughs> <laughs> there are appropriate times. I feel, yeah, I mean, I, I cannot multitask and do my income tax. I'm not going to right. multitask and work on the company financials. But there are a lot of things I feel like I can multitask and do. I feel the same way. <laughs> I, you know. I mean, I'm not giving my best for sure. But I can, I can be having a conversation with you and drinking a little water at the same time. <laughs> Those are two tasks. I am multitasking. I think, I think it's about complex tasks. I think, so. I think it is too. Yes, yes, okay. Um, what systems can you, do, can you use to reduce distraction? 
What systems can you use to reduce distraction? We talked about planner. I use my EA for sure. She, uh, she does some administrative things for me that I used to do and I wouldn't let go of because I thought it's simple enough and it's easy for me to take care of. But since I've enabled and asked her to do some of those things, wow, it's, it's been great. It's been very helpful. You know, I know not everyone on the, um, uh, on the call has EAs, but I would say that they are the single best uh, way of focusing my attention and focusing others' attention. My EA puts everything on my calendar. If I have to do anything at all, like review somebody's document, um, make, um, you know, fill out a form, anything, it all goes on my calendar. So, because I only have so many hours in the day, right? So I'm only gonna work 12 hours a day. That's my boundaries. And it's still a long day, but I will put in 12 hours, but I'm not gonna put 12 and a half hours in. So if it doesn't fit in that 12 hours, it does not get done. And that's five days a week. So I don't put anything on Saturday and Sunday, and I don't put anything before seven or after seven. So that's kind of my boundaries. Now, maybe that's excessive for some of you, but. I think for most executives, a 60 hour work week is, is pretty much the norm, right? So let's, let's all this, uh, this week really work on uh, trying to become the very best we can at focusing the attention of ourselves and the fo focusing the attention of others. And in closing, next week, we're at E5, Leveraging intelligence, leveraging our own intelligence, and leveraging the intelligence of others. Until then, folks, excellent participation, excellent work. You all have a great rest of your week. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, thank you, you too. Thank you for being Stay healthy. Carolyn, thanks for coming. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.